guys, what's going on? It's Jason with JW Classic BW, and yes, it's been a minute. Well, a little bit more than a minute, but we're back. We got some stuff to cover today. We got some new products from uh, King VW or Richard over there. And uh, yeah, some pretty cool stuff. We're right at the intro, getting into the end, and we're gonna do some updates, talk about what's going on with Goose. Uh, Envy is all torn apart, and why did I take her apart again? Well, we're gonna talk about that right at the intro, guys. See you in a second. That's right guys, I got Emmy all torn apart again and uh, well, she's a race car, so of course uh, she needed some work and it is starting to cool around outside, which means cruise time. And uh, down here in Texas, you got to take advantage of all of that time. So what's going on? What have we got as far as products from uh, King VW 61? Let me turn you around at the bench and show you that real quick. Yeah, he's coming out with all kinds of cool stuff. It seems like almost every time I check out his Instagram, he's got something new. You guys have seen this before. This is his uh, crank pulley bolt which is pretty sweet piece of hardware. And we're doing a giveaway today, guys. I ordered an extra one of these couplers. You guys have seen that video. If you haven't, check it out up over here in the corner. Installing one of these aftermarket or uh, later model couplers. And there's also an early model as well. The giveaway today. So go ahead and comment below shift coupler. If you don't know how to spell that, then just put down shift down below in the comments and you'll be entered in the drawing to get one of these bad boys. We are doing this today. This is for your clutch adjustment. He makes this pretty cool one. There's a bunch of different ones out there. This is his four banger unit. Sweet, anodized, uh, I don't know. Is this a, one of the high quality aluminums? I have to take a look at his website and I'll put that product information in the description below. But this is definitely well made. He's just came out with a bunch of titanium hardware as well, which is pretty sweet. We're also installing these, which is for the trans support today. Taking out the old ones and putting these ones in there just to kind of beautify things. And these are strong as all get out as well. So yeah, we're doing that today. But uh, as far as updates go, let's turn over to the bench here. Oh yeah, this is all the good stuff. That Bernie Bergman fan shroud that I've got all torn apart and taken out of the bug, taken out of Envy right now. Let's go ahead and uh, talk about this. I installed some new valve cover gaskets. These ones are like uh, a special plastic silicone. It says that it's like German quality, which, you know, I didn't know that they made a bunch of German silicone products back in the day. But yeah, I installed these because the standard stock cork ones, after a few heat cycles and driving around and, you know, putting some mileage on the engine, these just start to leak. The valve covers start to leak because I don't have the bales. Let's take a look at the 40 HP. Still got her, man. 40 HP still hanging out over here in the corner. She's got a little leak from the oil cooler. I picked up a new oil cooler. We're going to be doing that eventually, replacing that oil cooler in this bad boy. But you guys know the bales on the cylinder heads maintain constant pressure on those valve covers, which I don't have that option on Goose right here. Let me show you real quick. So if you're new to the channel, you haven't seen any of this cool, awesome bling down here that I had uh, made by Daryl Howard. He does all kinds of cool stuff. Check out his Facebook group, Race Rear Air Cooled Engineering. Pretty sweet stuff. But uh, yeah, after a certain amount of time, this, the bolts, the hardware up there, they don't maintain like constant pressure or like a, a like a, certain amount of resistance against that valve cover like the bales do so it starts to leak but i've been told and we're going to put that theory to the test the silicone doesn't have that problem so we've installed those i redid all my valves as far as valve clearance we got zero lash on these bad boys because you know i got these one to four potter rockers inside of here with this monster back over the bench guys talking about some of the other things that have is going on and why i kind of tore the engine apart I had to take all this off of here, all of this off of Envy, to be able to replace the crank position sensor. The, you can see here, this is my old one. Let me zoom in for you. Well, I was jacking around with something back there and got this out of whack as far as position goes. And my clock ring, this clock ring whacked the crap out of that uh, crank position sensor. And it wasn't getting proper timing or crank, uh, information back to the Haltech Elite that I have in here. So I went ahead and replaced the sensor. So I had to tore this all apart because this runs through that shrouding. It also included a grounding wire, which I kind of like because the grounding wire goes back to my chassis ground here. 
which is going to help out with any kind of radio type noise that the engine computer system might pick up and that'll just mean a more accurate signal. I'm also taking all of my hardware, like here, the hardware, my cylinder heads, and I'm redoing the Loctite on there with some of this green Loctite. That stuff's no joke. That definitely gets the job done. <laughs> you may have to do some heating to get stuff out of there, which is fine because I don't want it coming out of there. Also replacing some O2 sensors through time and, and driving uh, Envy around without a good tune on her. I don't know how many uh, O2 sensors I want went through, but this these are Bosch O2 sensors that I picked up off of Amazon at a great price compared to what Haltech wants to charge you for O2 sensors. I gotta get all this back together again. I don't know if you'll be seeing that today on this video. Probably not. That'll probably be, you know, done off camera. But today, on camera, we're gonna jack goose up in the air, install this new clutch adjustment nut, I guess you would call it. And uh, yeah, see how I like it. There's some different ones out there, some different manufacturers that make these things. There's quite a, actually quite a few different ones out there. I just got the old butterfly one up there and I like this one because it's smaller profile. And if you've ever seen my build when it comes to the fuel lines, I need something low profile to clear my fuel lines. But you'll see that here in a second once we get the, my baby up in the air. All right. And so I wanted to mention it too. One of the main reasons why I tore apart Envy again is because with you have the copper shims in here, a lot of people that run turbo engines have copper shims in here. And I've heard it from VW Darren and a couple of guys that got turbos that you're gonna have to retorque the heads eventually. And uh, yeah, that is exactly what happened here. I started losing some compression on my number three, four side. They were, it was definitely loose on that side. So retorquing was something that had to happen. And uh, yeah, hopefully once I get this bad boy back together again, we can go ahead and get our dyno. And I know I've been saying that for like, I don't know, ever. All right guys, let's get her up in the air. clutch adjustment wing nut up here and I might have to put a vice grip on the clutch cable too I usually do to help me out but you can see my fuel lines up through here so this low profile unit is going to be pretty nice I think it'll actually make it so I can get this clutch adjustment a lot easier so guys I'm going to pull this bad boy off of there and then uh, I'll get the new one started or get my, the new one on there and then we'll show you the deflection how much deflection you should have in your clutch pedal whenever you're getting this adjustment correct. All right guys, so here we go. Here is my stock one and the new four banger unit. And uh, yeah, the only issue I see is, if you guys can see it, I've already had to shave down the wings on this bad boy once before. And I'm gonna measure it just to check, but uh, I might be running into my fuel line still with this one, the four banger, but uh, we'll see. I'm going to take a little bit of anti-seize and run it on the threads in there just to help out when it comes to putting the new one on. But this is the OG, OG stock unit and the new four banger. I'll bring you guys back after uh, I try to put this thing on there. So I definitely have it adjusted a little too tight right now. I got you guys an angle <laughs> where you'll probably be able to see my hand turning this thing. The baby vice grips is a lifesaver at this point for this type of stuff. Gives you a little something. The uh, anti seize was probably not necessary. Right now, I don't have any deflection, and you want to have a little bit of deflection because that means your clutch. Will be fully engaged, will be engaged at all times, and you don't want that. You need to be able to have it to where the clutch is disengaged. Hence the deflection. 
as always, gang, so you know I'm not just pulling this information out of the air. This is the dealership manual, or a copy of what the dealership manual would have been like for 1961 to 65 volts wagons. And we're going to look at the adjustment right here. Adjustment of clutch pedal free play. M18. M18. Hey, there you go. It's not very much. I've heard all kinds of crazy stuff when it comes to what the free play is supposed to be from different folks, but it's best just to look. And it's like an inch. 0.4 to 0.8. It's actually less than an inch. I'll zoom you guys in. <sighs> da, da, da. Right here. Adjust clutch clearance by turning the adjustment nut. Oh, it is an adjustment nut. On cable and until the clutch pedal free play is 10 to 20 millimeters or 0.4 between 0.4 and 0.8. You press clutch pedal several times and recheck pedal free play. So you can see right here. I uh, can't see right there. Hold on. You can see right here. That's not very much. I would say it's like less than an inch, about half an inch. So I know some somebody out there is going to be curious as in to what the deflection is. Man, the position that I put myself in for you guys. <laughs> what the deflection is with a ruler. So here we go. I'm just going to take it slow. Maybe we can get this, maybe, because it's just going to be real tough. Right about there, so this is about an inch and a half, maybe? Yeah. That's about an inch and a half of deflection right there. Yeah, before it starts to, because I feel it. I feel it right there about a little bit, a little bit less than an inch and a half. You guys can't see it that good, I'm sure. Super simple adjustment. Really easy to turn that thing, like I said, uh, the, using the, Anti-seize, not necessary, probably. Plus, you know, anti-seize, it gets everywhere. Do I have any in my head? <laughs> it, gets it gets everywhere when you use that stuff. So, yeah, the uh, having the four tangs on there kind of gives you a little bit more torque when it comes to adjusting that, you know, with your fingers. And that can be beneficial when you're getting underneath there trying to fight with that sucker. Also, don't forget, you might want to get, like, a mini set of vice grips to help hold the clutch cable while you're doing that adjustment. And you saw that the free play on the pedal is about an inch. But uh, yeah, lots of stuff to do still. Glad to be back on the channel, guys. Glad to see you guys in the comments. Appreciate everybody out there that has lent us some support and uh, or concern when I haven't been on in such a long time. But there's been a lot going on, guys. Move, some shifts in the job. Kids are getting older, spending more time with your family. So yeah, get out in the garage when you can. Spend time with your family, they're the priority. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. This is Jason with Data Classic BW and Get in the grass, it's more done. See you soon.